looking at logs, looking through logs to identify potential threats and attacks and then understanding how to mitigate those. Someone who understands uh, how to look at a screen and look at alerts, for example, and then pick out an alert and understand what that is and what to do and then either deal with it or escalate it to the next level. common question. Any IT related background, skills are transitive, at least some of them, to security, any kind of, um, you know, like I said, help desks, you know, uh, service desk kind of work, administration work even better, like a sysadmin or a network admin, maybe you're a network guy, you know, it doesn't matter, software developer, you know, application developer, you know, cloud specialist, uh, you know, any of those IT related jobs or roles can lend themselves to security because most IT roles, IT related roles require the individual to have that analytical thinking and problem solving ability. And that's really what it's about is having uh, an analytical mind, being able to solve problems and uh, know where to go to solve, a, solve an issue. You know, all of those help tremendously. A lot of SOC analysts uh, positions are, are tend to be open quite a bit. The turnover rate for SOC analysts is something like, uh, I want to say two years, maybe two and a half years. And that's actually normal. And there's nothing wrong with that um, because a SOC analyst position is like an entry level role. And it's not a role where you're supposed to be there for more than three or four years. It's actually designed for people to be introduced to the field and learn you know, learn about threat actors, learn about red team and blue team and, and that sort of thing, and learn about hacking tools and techniques and how to recognize them. Ideally, SOC analysts will, after three years or so, want to move on to something else, like maybe an architect role or eventually an engineer role, which is more senior. Um, but yeah, I would say SOC analysts, uh, you know, there are other titles like um, cybersecurity specialist, you know, they use the words like a specialist, analyst. Those are typically used interchangeably. Lead, cybersecurity lead, those words are typically used interchangeably uh, as entry level type positions or maybe one to two years experience. And it'll say IT security or cybersecurity. Uh, cloud security is another one. Uh, cloud security specialists focusing on, you know, obviously the cloud, Azure, AWS, and so on. Um, those are the big ones right now. Yeah, I would say, so the CompTIA has has a uh, Security Plus, um, but they also have Network Plus and, and others. You know, don't focus just on security, but look at the other IT related certifications out there because it shows that you're a little more well-rounded. So for example, if you have Security Plus, I would also get like Network Plus. You know, something else to demonstrate that you, know, you actually understand networks. You're not just a security person, you, you, you also understand networking. You want to demonstrate that you have sort of a well-rounded um, knowledge and experience. And that's why I, I suggest the, the not just the security certifications, but also more IT related. You know, if you feel like getting one of the Cisco certifications, great. You know, Palo Alto, Fortinet, Microsoft, get a Microsoft certification or AWS. Those go very well with a Security Plus or even a CISSP. And Azure, uh, Microsoft and Amazon both offer their own security uh, certificates as well. Understanding of networking, TCP IP, application security, you know, common application security uh, vulnerabilities and knowing how to deal with those, analytical skills and problem solving skills and understanding how to escalate problems as you see them, experience with logs and monitoring. A lot of people ask about penetration testing and ethical hacking and how do I get to do that? Uh, typically that's uh, considered a more advanced um, activity. Uh, most employers, and I'm one of them, will not hire an entry level pen tester. We just won't because of liability. One of the premier tool sets is Kali, K-A-L-I. 
Kali Linux is a Linux distribution. It's basically a hacker's toolkit. It contains so many different tools that hackers use and pen testers use to do their work. So knowing Kali, being familiar with Kali, is really good. Another one is Parrot, like the bird. It's similar to, to Kali, you know, Black Arch. I mean, there are several Linux distributions that are security specific that contain, you know, the tool sets. And so at that point, if you have a personal preference to Kali or Parrot or Black Arch or something. Uh, so that's, that's a big one there. Um, that's helpful. Some interviewers will ask you questions about MMAP and how to properly use MMAP. So I would be very familiar with that if I were, you know, a, a candidate. And then Metasploit is, is also commonly used as well. So your scanning tools like MMAP and then Metasploit. And then, you know, beyond that, there are others like Burp Suite that um, are handy to know. And it demonstrates that you understand how they work and you're familiar with them um, because they're, they're commonly used. You know, a lot of people miss this is understanding just your regular network tools, you know, subnetting, for example, TCP IP subnetting. You know, what does subnetting mean? Explain that. Why do, why do companies do it? What is traceroute? Why would you use traceroute? Ping, why would you use ping? Your basic network tools, and this is why I go back to maybe having that network plus certification is, is good because I've seen security people just not know basic general IT commands. You know, how would you go about looking at this or looking at that? What would you use uh, to gather this information? Like some of the Windows net commands, for example, uh, you know, they're not security specific, but they can be used to gather, you know, information for security purposes.